Well, we're back again, back for some more punishment, some more um, hardcore winter carving, freezing as usual, and uh, I'm still gutted from my last, if you remember, if you watched my last blog, a lot of effort, poured down rain, and I lost one about 11 o'clock at night, so I'm still um, reeling from that, putting in all the effort, and it's the only bite that, I mean, the last fish out was about four weeks ago. I ain't been down for two weeks, so that was um, that was gutting to say the least. But we're back and we're moving forward, and we have another change of tactics this session. Oh, I must mention the old. Here he is. Look, he's in now. Don't you see him in now? The old carp dog. You probably can't see him. He's got the. Um... He's back with me this week, so he's back with me with this visit. So the same, we've, uh, I'm back for more punishment, back down to Syndicate Lake, up in Peterborough, and I've had a bit of a think on the way down, we've got really high pressure, 1027, 1028, and this is a deep pit, you know, it's, it's in front of this swim, you know, let's have a walk down, in front, in front of this swim you've probably got 18, 20 foot out there, you know, maybe 21 foot out to the left. So I've been thinking about it, how I've been successful in years gone past on other deep waters this time of year when nothing's been happening because no, I've not seen no fizzing but I did see a fish show out in front of this swim about 40 yards out so it, it just shows they're, um, they're moving, they're about and this is gin clear this water so I thought sorry I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with zigs, fish three zigs in repenny in for a pound you know so not just on one, but three. So I've banged them out there, and I fish adjustable zigs. I don't really like the fixed zigs that a lot of people use. I like setting up the old adjustable, because it keeps me active. Then what I can do is I can have three rods out there, three zigs, three lures as I like to call them, lure fishing, and they can be at different depths. One at three foot underneath the surface, another one at five foot underneath, one at seven. And every couple of hours, I'll move them up and down. You know, just to see if I can try and find the fish. And if you look at the sky, the sky is really, it's over, it's like cloudy, a white cloud. And I love using what I found works best for me. Doesn't work best for everyone that I've spoke to, but a bit of black foam. Now, I've had some real good hits in the winter on just a single bit of black foam out there. No spotting over the top, just find three areas move the adjustable zigs up and down all over the place and uh, you know I've, I've nicked the odd couple of fish when I've done it especially with the eye pressure and if you think for a fish looking up at those uh, those bits of black foam it's like a silhouette against the the white the white clouds it's such a gin clear water so that's my thinking about it also and also what I do is I put I use a coloured uh, boily stop on top uh, I've got three pink ones on so, you know, you may think that's a load of old rubbish, but if a fish is going above it, which is going to be dark below, isn't it? Because you've got a dark bottom, they're going to see that little tiny fleck of colour. It might just turn them to out investigating it. And the way they investigate, the way fish investigate things, is with their mouth. So if it's in there, I've got a good chance of getting a bite, haven't I? So I also fish heavy bobbins. Uh, because I want to know if that drops back or up and down, it's, uh, you know, because it can be really strange takes. With zigs, they're not just one toners. They can be an up, 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 down, up, down. So I want a heavy bobbin on now. Tight lines, heavy bobbin. And it normally sort of nails them, you know, just it, it, even just that little bit of weight may be able to pull the, uh, the hook home a little bit more and clipped up. So there we go, we've got three zigs out there. I'll ping them out there, three zigs. And, the, and the, way I, the way I I use the little tiny adjustable ones, Fox do a, a large one for fishing up to about 80 yards, 100 yards, and a little tiny mini sort of adjustable zig. That's, I've got three of them on. And the, the hook length I use, I, I, I love double, double strength, eight pound double strength. It's just, uh, I use it for floater fishing and for my zig fishing, don't think you'll beat it. Little size 10 of a uh, wide gape, little, little size called a wide gape or a, or a big T from uh, ESP. You know, they're, they're, they're puck up little wide gape hooks. They're perfect for zig fishing. And I like to fish the little bit of black foam tight to the back of the hook. 
well not really tight but so, so it's almost touching it so it sort of hides it a little bit as well in some instances even with a small look and the way I go about it is I'll, I'll bang the zig out there and I'll just I'll, I'll put it on a, I'll let it go down on a tight line put the rod on the rest and I'll look out to the area where I've just cast to and I'll just let a foot of line out at a time until the black bit black bit of foam hits the surface it can be very difficult with the shadows on the water and the sun and cloud and all that reflecting off the surface to actually see that little bit of black foam popping up so I always bring with me binoculars so I can look out to generally the area with one hand and let a foot of line up with the other and nine times out of ten boom I'll see it hit the surface pull it down it disappears let it up it's the surface pull it down and I'm on it that's it and then I tighten the clutch up tighten the clutch up until that disappears then I know I'm, I'm, I'm on the surface so I'm pull it down one two three foot boom that's one rod done do exactly the same with another rod one two three four five pull it back five feet bang lovely we're on the money that's the way to fish adjustable zigs so you know exactly the depth you're fishing at you're not guessing with a fixed one so got a couple of nights gonna uh, give it a go I'm gonna do at least 24 hours on all three rods of zigs see if I see any fish show or hopefully I'll, you know I'll get some sort of occurrence might even get a bite or two you never know you've got to try something when nothing's happening so I've got a couple of days gonna fish like that for at least 24 hours I may even fish for 24 hours I might just go all in and just fish zigs for this session at all so it's about midday about four hours till it gets dark uh, oh incidentally it, um, I've had quite a few bites at night time on the zigs would you believe on a black bit of foam night time you know dead of night it's flat calm you know and you, you get a take in the winter and in the spring or summer as well on the zigs I think it's the again it's the uh, it's it, 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 it's it's the fish seeing the silhouette against the moon or the or, or the reflection of reflection of the water it's something you, you know they sense it and they just go for it boom that's why I like calling them the old lure fishing because it might just be it's in their way and boom that they have a go and then you hook one and you've got one in the net you know so I'm gonna give, give it a go at least 24 hours see what happens and um, let's uh, let's hope we're gonna bag one let's hope we're gonna get a bite this time and um, we'll, we're, uh, we'll catch up soon Well, another uneventful night. It's um, pretty hard going this winter, I must say. Pretty hard going. Not a lot happening. There's another guy on the lake as well. He's a bit further up. And he's, um, he's had nothing, seen nothing either. See that one fish out 40 yards in front of me out there. But um, apart from that, last night I thought I was going to see a couple show. It was rather cold. It was rather cold last night, that's for certain. So the zigs haven't haven't um, haven't delivered the goods as yet. But I've had a look round this morning and I can't no bubbling, no fizzing, no fish showing. So I'm not gonna move. There's nowhere to really move to that interests me. So we're gonna stick with the zigs I think for the for the um, for the last night. See what happens. Because you never know, do you? You just gotta keep on keeping on. I mean, lake's looking lovely. It's uh, just been nice to see a couple of fish show, or you know, get one in the net. So the old, the old um, bobbins have remained motionless. I did have a couple of bleeps on the right-hand rod, and I thought that was going to be um, that was going to be it. That was going to be a bite. That was in dark about seven o'clock last night. But apart from that, very very quiet. Very quiet. But you never know, do you? You've got to be in it to win it. That's what I say. You've got to keep on keeping on. So I'd just like to say thanks for everyone that's been uh, sending some really good comments on the uh, blogs on the YouTube and um, on Facebook as well. So like I say, a shout out to a few of you guys. A bit of recognition for uh, messaging me with your kind comments about how you like the vlogs and the 
and the um, and the other videos I do. It all makes it all worthwhile. So a bit of a shout out to Jess Campbell, uh, Jonathan Wainwright, Dave Smith, Peter Black, and the big dog, Gavin Johnson as well, who's uh, been trying to give me a bit of encouragement from Summit HQ to uh, to try and catch a few when I've been out blanking my ass off as usual. So all the encouragement, all the nice comments and that. Thanks guys, keep them coming. Subscribe to my channel if you're not. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'll get back to you with, uh, with what's happening tonight, hopefully. You know, today, or if I move, or, you know, or, or if the worst comes to the worst, it's, a, it's another blank session. I'm on my way home. But all we can do is try, can't we? You know, I'm trying with the zigs this week. Trying to give it a little bit, little bit of difference. Just thought they might produce. But, um, you know, I haven't lost heart totally. I still feel a bit confident, so we're going to see if we can uh, if we can bag one, or if we see some move, and uh, see what happens. Carp dog has just been uh, sleeping his ass off as well. He's tucked away in a bag in there. Look, I don't even see him. Look, look at him. Look, little face, little face peering out in there. Look, look at that. Look, he's loving it, running up and down the bank like a lunatic, chasing everything that moves. So at least we're out anyway. Beat Sydney doors watching East Enders, that's for certain. Even though we're blanking. But hopefully we might bag one, so you know, just gotta keep on keeping on. So hopefully next time you see me I'll be with um, Big Fat Mirror. Speak to you soon. Well it's a beautiful winter's morning, sun's out, perfect zig weather. A quiet night last night, really quiet. But I did see a fish near me left hand, in between me left and middle rod. Really thought I was going to get a bite. You know, I'm fishing about three foot underneath the surface with the nearest rod to that, so I thought I've got to get on it. I've got to perhaps get a bite, but nothing. Really, really quiet. You know, I don't think the other guy at the other end's had anything either. Just seems really quiet. You know, even though I've seen one, the liners, that, you know, normally if they're about on the old six, you get the odd bleep and that, but nothing. Zilch. Really quiet, so I'm going to give it a few more hours. At midday, because the sun's up, hopefully getting them fish up in the water and maybe nick one, but it's not looking very good at the moment. It's looking very dire. Another blank is on the cards, it seems. Let's just have a look at the water temperature. I've got my, uh, I've got my little uh, thermometer out there. Let's have a look. I don't see that, but that says 6.6. .6. It says 6.6. .6. So it's been dropping over the last month, hasn't it? You know, if you remember yesterday, I think I think I looked at it and it was 7.1 yesterday. But um, you know, the rods, the rods are looking um quiet, very, very quiet. Nothing happening. Nothing happening at all. So, you know, beautiful sunrise this morning. But that's no good. I want to start catch I want to start catching them catching a fish so it might have to be a change of venues in the next couple of weeks I've only got four well just done just over three weeks till Christmas so it'd be nice to get one before before Christmas anyway so I'm gonna love you and leave you and that might be it you know hopefully not hopefully I'll come back to you in a, in a few minutes and uh, I've had one but it looks like it'd be a slow pack up adios you know and um, start the long trip home with another blank underneath my belt. I think that's three or four now blanks since I last had one, but nothing's been out. Nothing's been out. It's been one fish out in the last five weeks, so it's um, a bit dismal. I have to find somewhere else, I think. Because this, I mean, this, lot, this last year was producing 30s and 40s and 20s all the way through the winter. All the way through. Didn't stop. But this year, for some reason, like on a lot of lakes, no one's catching anything anywhere. I don't know what it is, I just can't put my finger on it. It might be just one of them winters where nothing comes out. So, I'm going to love you and leave you. <clears throat> and uh, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be doing quite a few rig and <clears throat> bait videos soon. So, you know, because I'm blanking my ass off. So, I've got to fill it with something, haven't I? <clears throat> so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
I'll put the link down below in the comments section. And uh, please give me a like and share on Facebook when I post it up on there. And uh, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Speak to you soon.